Hey you! Are you looking for fun, adventure, and the chance to explore a whole world of excitement? Then come to the Bikini Bottom Carnival. Here, you can electrocute your friends, throw pickles at living creatures to aggravate them, and you can even commit murder. Doesn't that sound fun? Visit the Bikini Bottom Carnival today. So Bikini Bottom Carnival was a SpongeBob SquarePants Flash game that was released in three parts. It came out in 2006, making it one of the classics. The developers were Sarbakan Game Studio, one of the most esteemed Flash game companies to ever walk the earth. As this was 2006, this was before they fully established themselves. Still, they would go on to create some of the greatest cartoon games to play on the computer. So let's see how they did with this one. This played out as a collection of mini-games that were gradually released over time. This would become a popular medium for SpongeBob game developers to utilize, but likely because of how early this was to the scene, it had a slightly different format than games like Legends of Bikini Bottom or Glove Universe. Rather than having new mini-games added over time, Sarbakan just released three versions of the game that had new ones unlocked in each of them. We could just play the third one to have them all, but let's experience this like we're back in 2006 and playing this for the first time. I hope you're all looking forward to Ice Age. So let's jump on into the first installment. First of all, great music. It's like we're at an actual carnival. Just don't make me jump across a bunch of platforms in a big top this time. You can either play with one or two players, then you select either Spongebob or Patrick. This only determines who you see in each of the mini-games. Then you're brought to a screen where you can select one of nine tents- uh, sorry, I meant three tents- to go into. You'll be met with your first disappointment when you realize you can't go to the hot dog cart. I see Man Ray was on the development team. The first game is called Ketchum, but there's nobody named Ash involved. You get the instructions as Gary moves across the screen to indicate loading. There's also this funny looking guy. Also, I guess they set up the carnival around the Palace of Pranks. If you happen to win Seanut Brittle as a prize, don't trust it. But in this, you're driving a small car and collecting stars that match your character's color. The meter at the bottom of the screen shows the two colors fighting it out to take the lead. But be careful, because you can give your enemy an edge by collecting their color instead of your own. You should also watch out for jellyfish because they electrocute you and leave you frozen for four seconds. It feels like a lot longer when you're actually playing. Also, I'm censoring it because your character rapidly flashes bright colors while they're frozen. I actually couldn't figure out how to beat this because I kept reaching the end of the meter and couldn't go beyond that point. I guess I either needed to lose or wait a gajillion years to get the maximum high score. This game really only fully works if you're in two-player mode, but I'm not the type of person who associates with other people. I guess I have a dog, though. Seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if she could use a keyboard. You wouldn't believe how addicted Golden Doodles are to putting their paws on everything. Like it is with most of these games, a second player adds more of a challenge. Now you can catch electric eels and freeze your enemy for a bit. Hey, chill out, Grace. You think that's enough? Ah, the joys of randomly generated power-ups. But let's move on to Deep Sea Sharpshooter. You know what you do in this? Shoot people? Yeah, they gave Spongebob a gun. Now that is one of the scariest concepts I have ever heard. They could write a whole episode about it. But actually, it's a bubble gun, and you're only shooting cutouts of people. You use the S key to move your crosshairs up and down as you try to land them on random citizens that you can shoot for points. The instructions only tell you not to shoot the good guys, but aren't entirely clear who qualifies as a bad guy. Mr. Krabs is an exception because he gives you extra time, but I guess all these random citizens are bad guys. Why do they deserve such a fate? Sandy and Gary are the good guys in question. Though it's actually really hard to aim this with only one key controlling it. I guess that's part of the challenge. Some targets are bigger or smaller than others to give you even more or fewer points. You try to rack up as many as you can before the timer runs out. SpongeBob also has a beard. His Krusty Krab hours are getting ridiculous and he doesn't have time to shave anymore. But the last one we have is called Sunday Splatter. Here, you hit keyboard keys as quickly as possible to make as many Sundays as you can before the timer runs out. Sadly, you can't make the ultimate Sunday from something smells. This game's okay, but it's no SpongeBob teaches typing. So let's move on to the second installment. This is called Puffer Pop. You hold down F and S to get an angle on a meter, then you release them to throw a pickle at a pufferfish. If you hit one, it puffs up and flies away. You have to mess around to throw at different angles because you don't get any points for hitting an empty hole. Pretty simple, let's move on. 
Now here's whack an eel, where you hit eels as they come out of holes like in whack-a-mole. The instructions say certain targets should never be struck while showing a picture of Gary, but that's all they really say on the matter. Hitting a wrong target will cause your character and the hammer to rapidly flash colors for 7 seconds. Other than that, it's just whack-a-mole. Now here's Ring Fling, a game where you fling Sadako at people. Nah, it's similar to Puffer Pop, only this time you use the spacebar to throw rings at hermit crabs as your character moves across the screen. The instructions say you throw rings at giant sea urchins, so I guess the developers changed their mind. Darn, I would have liked to have seen that. This is a bit harder than Puffer Pop, but it's a welcome challenge. Now let's move on to the third and final part, which you can probably just play from the beginning to have all the games at your disposal. This first one is called Basket Barrel. It's like Nicktoons Basketball, but with a lot less Nicktoons. And a lot less basketball. Okay, it really isn't. You hit keys to go up a meter so you can make a perfect shot. Most of the time, you land a shot even if you don't go all the way up, but you don't get as many points for those. It's fine. Now here's tic tac you Hmm... That's painful. The instructions tell you to throw pearls, but you actually throw potatoes. So I guess a certain crab made a few budget cuts. This one's unique because it emulates the feeling of trying to play tic-tac-toe while someone is trying to pull you away from the computer. You use the S and D keys to move your cursor to a hole, but you're being pushed back and you have to fight the current to aim it where you want to go. You don't really have an enemy in single player. The computer will just block off one of the holes. Now this is really interesting. I never thought I'd play a version of tic-tac-toe that fought back. So let's conclude with See Your Strength, another painful pun. In this, you absolutely destroy your spacebar as you mash it to hit a butt and send a ball flying to hit a ball. Yeah, I know it's a tongue, but it looks like a butt. Also, Sandy's house is here. I wonder how she feels about all this commotion outside. And this mission is fine. It's a lot easier than its counterpart in Glove Universe, but I don't like mashing the spacebar. It feels a lot more flimsy than any other keyboard key, and I keep thinking I'm going to break it. I'm a pretty aggressive button masher. And that wraps things up for this carnival experience. As an earlier Spongebob game by Sarbakken, I'm more forgiving of it for not being the most complicated thing in existence. I think you have to play on multiplayer to get the full experience some of these minigames have to offer. But this would make for a fine way to spend some time as a Spongebob fan in 2006. A bunch of silly carnival games with your favorite characters? What's not to love? This is something you can check out if you're just looking for something simple and mindless. Serbakin's library covers a wide range of subjects, as does Nickelodeon's as a whole. But this was a nice trip back to the 2000s, just as long as your second player isn't a cheater. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.